first century superhuman And I know that the answers are inside Yeah, I am a 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come, come on everyone Let's celebrate, we are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same, and we are light, and yeah, we are one And we can make a difference yeah, we can Today we are live with our show, Shift of the Ages, and we are unraveling what is going on in the world today. Today I have with me a wonderful guest, Ana Vasquez. Ana, welcome to the show today, and... Um, Anna is a connector. She goes by Anna Connects You. Hi, Anna. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yes, so much going on on the world scene today, right? Most definitely, it's extremely exciting. Yes, we got together and decided we really needed to talk about this and um, share with everyone, our listening audiences, what is going on on all these levels in our culture? Because right now, cosmic light ancient texts and quantum physics are converging in our world. And as the world is shut down in many ways right now, there are those who have been working for many years to go about removing a lot of the shadow activity that's gone on on the planet. And we don't really hear about that in the conventional news, but we have all these wonderful alternative news medias between those who are waking up on the planet, right? Yes, yes, we do. I know you've been pretty involved in that. How do you see that alternative news media going? You know, we have uh, the Q movement, which is really big. Um, and there's a lot of different, uh, you know, stories and narratives that are out there in regards to the Q movement. It's important uh, in, in this moment and at this time that we work together in collaboration. And that's really what this is about. And working together in collaboration is kind of us understanding. Um, we, I believe that we are creators. Quantum physics is teaching us this. And so for us to be centered in our hearts, to be envisioning the best for planet Earth. So then it, it becomes kind of difficult to look at the shadows. And so the energy that we put out, the thought energy we put out, the heart energy we put out is affecting how all of this is taking place. So how do we become participants in a positive way in removing these shadow activities? And how do we, how do we embrace that there has been a lot of darkness in this world? You ask amazing questions, and I'm really glad that you are talking about this because I don't hear anybody really covering this information. Yes. Um, you know, I like to say that I'm an individual that jumps between two worlds. Yes. And these two worlds of both the spiritual and enlightened and star seed uh, individuals. And then there's also the individuals that are the soldiers, the boots on the ground, the individuals within the cube movement, uh, you know, our politicians. And there's just there's just a completely different group of individuals. But really, we need to be working more together. Here's how I see that, you know, the whole Q movement as most people understand, uh, covers the very big saying, where we go one, we go all. And that is the same. I uh, love that. I it, just it, love it. It gives me goosebumps all the way through. It's like, so true. It and is. In the, higher, in the higher consciousness, we have to recognize we are all one. Anyway, go ahead. I don't want to interrupt your stream of thought. No, no, yes, it's perfect. We I, one, I wanted we to make all. sure that I supported that. I want to definitely yes. support that because I know that within the spiritual uh, networks, uh, it's the same thing. We're all one consciousness, correct? And, you know, as our vibration raises and we're uh, shifting into this newer enlightenment, um, you know, there is a lot of love and a lot of space that we have to hold at this time. Yes. But what I am saying is that we, we need to come together as a collective to send that love energy to our soldiers and to the individuals that are doing this hard work. We oh. understand that everybody who comes here comes with their life's purpose to do all different types of things. We have how many millions of people on this planet 
And we can't all say that it's the same for everyone. Not when we're making the shift. Not when we're making the shift. Everyone is going to be at different levels. And we are all at different levels of what I call awakening. You know, so, I mean, um, we were just talking the other day and you shared that there were some things you really just heard about in the last few months that maybe I've known about for a couple of years. And then that makes us start taking action as far as um, today, we're going to talk about something amazing that's going on in the alternative news, which is children being brought out of the tunnels and this breaking down what's been going on in human trafficking. And this may be very difficult for people to hear, but one of the things you're talking about with soldiers who are boots on the ground, helping to do these operations. Oh, and I know that they're coming out of the Pentagon. I've just got total chills as we're talking. These beautiful souls who are out there helping bring out literally many, many thousands of children. The numbers I've seen are like up to 35,000 children. And this is by end up. Um, And do you want to talk a little? So we're, so we're, So what you're talking about supporting, that we need to be supporting these operations as they're going on. And first of all, we've even got to comprehend that they're going on, which I think is a really big step for a lot of people. I I feel like I'm always in that, you know how when you're in a circle and you're kind of holding hands with two people and people on one side are going one way and the people on the other side are going the (laughs) other way. I think you and I both are kind of one of those like connectors for, yeah, we're not quite that awake yet, but yes, we're becoming that awake. And these, um, this knowledge of the shadows among humanity, which really has come out in disclosure in movies like The Matrix over many years, um, that humanity has been, it's our energy has been siphoned off of by the big corporations and by even things more shadow and more co- covert than that. Agreed. And then we have, we have the people who haven't liked Trump But I believe Trump really came in as a president who was outside of the conventional political system who could start breaking down some of these things that had been running things in the background for so long. Whether you are new to Q or you've been in Q forever, everybody has a different form of red pilling. So what Q did is he shed or they shed a light on information that some of us just didn't have all the connected dots to. We knew about Satanism. We knew about subliminal messaging. We knew um, that there were people in power that were making deals. We didn't have the evidence of it. We didn't have enough whistleblowers. Um, it just, it wasn't mainstream. And we definitely weren't hearing about it, um, you know, in some of the big name uh areas that most people get their information on, which is mainstream media. Right. Um, Mainstream media, which is owned by basically six corporations, and they are all communicating among themselves. And we literally can watch newscasts that are verbatim the same from one to the next to the next. And yes, they have a certain ideology that they practice. And it's not that the majority of the people on this planet support. Um, So one of the big things that I'd like to make sure that we cover today is that we we share the information of these soldiers and their mindset. Um, These are individuals, some of the biggest things that I see on Twitter and even within my communities are the soldiers that have had to harden their hearts. They've had to, let me say that again, had to, harden their hearts in order to be able to do the things that you and I did not plan, did not state prior to coming here at this moment in time, we did not sign up for. They did. Right. And so our love and support needs to go to them because we have not fully won this war yet. Not right. everything has come out yet. We are on the verge of this information coming out and it will come yes. out in its own time. We're not And it will come out it. as much as people can absorb it. I think some of it may never come out completely, but it's coming out enough that we can know what's going on. I, think I don't know if we need to do yeah but we need to just change the narrative yes and, and that's why we're having this conversation is to help change the narrative yes. to help us understand what narrative to follow and i just keep getting goosebumps as you talk about the soldiers i mean it's just i've been reading reports of um 
tent camps being set up like mash camps that are helping take care of these children that are being brought out of tunnels from literally caged settings. And um, do you wanna go into a little bit talking about what we've been reading and learning and hearing is going on behind the scenes? And these are from really, um, really well acknowledged good reporters who have been, who were originally traditional reporters and have now stepped over to the side of the awakened reporting and reporting the truth. Before getting into that, I just want to make sure that I also note that there are small signs that are being shown to us right now that this is indeed uh, certain steps that are being taken. Um, the setup is very clear for those yes. of us that are awake. There is no amount of uh, you know, information from anywhere else other than what I see and feel. And that comes back to the collective consciousness of thought and not relying so much on, you know, paper documented evidence, but the knowingness that you just have that connection to the information. And that's what we're striving to. That's not where our soldiers and a lot of our, you know, all of our community is, is at currently, but that's what we're striving to. So when we're hearing this information, um, you know, in Trump's speech, he yes. said something that was just like, I, you know, I, you can totally hear the you can totally hear the double message. You when you, you know hear. this information, you can hear what he's saying for the general public to hear, and then you can hear him communicating that we are taking care of these things behind the scenes. I know you heard something recently in the last twenty four hours that I didn't hear, so I can't wait to hear. Well, it. so Trump uh, said this actually on Good Friday. This was during his briefing. Um, Thanks to uh, Santa Surfing. If you don't follow Santa Surfing, I get a lot of great information from her. Um, mm. She did a post on this and did all the edits, and I uploaded it onto my page as well as uh, on Anna Connects. You nice. and um, POTUS was saying that it's been an honor to be their president. Mm. Okay, let's just sit with that for a minute. <laughs> um, Wait, let's, let's say that again. It's been an honor to be their president. Why are we talking in a different tense than the present? It's, it hasn't been an honor to be the president. It, it has been an honor to be their president. Yes. Our president. And so there, there is this thought that, you know, is he stepping down? Um, you know, what's, what's happening here? And a lot of the Q posts, we have been uh, getting information in regards to that this is not going to be another four year election. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what does that mean? Right. <laughs> you know, you, it's, it's asking the questions and continually um, taking time to uh, collectively think with other individuals that, you know, that have the same framework, you know, what's going on here? You know, let's, right. this isn't, you know, so he is talking about an announcement that he's actually going to make on Tuesday mm -hmm. about opening up our, con our uh, country task force. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is really big because he's talking about a team of individuals. Um, it's a small team of very smart, smart business people, uh, doctors and lawyers lawyers and a few other individuals. And he's talking about uh, opening up the country back. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm just like, come on. Like, yeah, this absolutely. It seems a little bit obvious. <laughs> right. Do you know about the books that were written in the 1800s? Do I'm tell. sure that you probably do. Well, um, there's a couple of them. And one is about the time travels of Baron von Trump. Oh, yes. I've and heard. yeah, right. And so the story is that his uncle was the person who dismantled Tesla's laboratory and had all the documents from everything that Tesla was doing. And then the second book is by the same author, um, Ingersoll, I can't remember his last name, but is called The Last President. Mm -hmm. And w with everything that's going on right now with us, here's what I believe about this kind of system that we've been in for a long time. Maybe humanity was in, we were in our infancy. We were growing up into who we were going to become. I, I just say it that way to be gracious about it. And so there's been, you know, these 147 corporations running the world right. with certain people at the top of them and kind of the 
the what a corporation really says is it exists for the benefits of its stockholders it doesn't exist for the benefits of the people so these were all for their own benefit and not for the benefit of humanity and there's just so many little layers we can go into in that however point being that I believe we are breaking the bond with this system that has been running things for so long. And in that happening, what's got to arise? I say in these days when we are learning to live in love, we're learning to breathe and smile, we're learning to relax our neurobiology and become the creative, joyful beings that we really are here to be and to do the missions that we came here to do. As we do that, that which is of the darkness will and is disintegrating. It can no longer hold form. And this is like when the tide changes in the ocean. We're in this changing of an age. We're in this changing of the tides. And what is there when the tide changes in the ocean and the new tide rolls in? There's like chaos. You know, everything gets churned up but it all it settles out into a new pattern. And so I think what you're talking about right now is new ways of being and doing that are having to emerge from these old systems being taken apart. And it is time for those old systems to be taken apart. I believe much of humanity is coming of age. We are educated, we're intelligent, we are in our hearts, learning to be more in our hearts. And there are many who still need education. There's so many really billions of people on the planet who also need to be supported in having basic infrastructure, basic education. But it is time for those who have grown up to begin helping to run this world in new ways. So I feel right. like that's what you're talking about. Almost oh, definitely. And we also have to take in consideration uh, the new documentary that just came out. This is yes. the biggest documentary of the year, um, yes. 2020 so far. And it is called Out of Shadow. And it is a wonderful, wonderful documentary. Uh, it was on a Q post. Um, so it's been Q approved. Very and intense to watch. It is, I think, a very good start. Um, yes. You know, if Fall Cabal doesn't work for you, um, there are other really great, um, you know, Q uh, videos that are out there that are extremely informative and a little bit more light red pilling than yes. um, more of the heavy red pilling. And I think that it would yes. be really great to, in the near future, that I we start talking about that. There is light red pilling where we are stating extremely factual information that we can measure in regards to our food and the chemicals that we have within it. And yes. you know, we look at the the state of where we're at and. We're always saying, oh, it's just politics. It's politics. It's so political, you know, right. um, that's an old framework. That's going to be an old conversation in the near future. Well, let me ask you a quick question. And just an aside, Ron Parton, I want to say thanks. Ingersoll Lockwood is the author from the 1800s. Oh, yes. He wrote those books and you can find them on YouTube. They're really cool. Um, nice. And I think worth reading or listening to just for research. But why don't you explain um, I think most of it, red pilling has become such a common term. Um, do you feel like explaining um, what red pilling is just for anyone who hears this who might not quite know? Uh, red pilling originally came from the movie The Matrix, where right. Neo was given an option to take either the blue pill or the red pill, and the blue right. pill would allow him to stay within the Matrix. It was a right. false facade of his real existence, and the yes. red pill was going to be the truth, and it was going to be um, extremely difficult to hear this information because this information was going to break away from his old framework, and he was going to have to yes. stop looking looking at how he had originally been living his life and look to find more truths and more information and more facts to support it. And that's what he did. Absolutely. So when we talk about red pilling, we as a culture, a society, those who are awakening, we're revealing to ourselves information that is outside of our original blue pill box that was this perfect reality that we lived in. And now we're over here in red pill land going, wow, everything is not what I thought it was. And that's what happened when I wrote my book. My friends would come out and knock on my van door in the morning. I sat with my head wrapped in a scarf for six months and just writing every day. And I was getting such big downloads. And they would say, how are you today? And I'd say, I'm not the same person I was yesterday. 
And I think that I think any of us could say that every day now. Like we it's a lonely hear journey. More. It is. Well, it can be. It can be a very lonely journey for yes. those of you that are getting red pilled, that are listening in. Um, yes. It's just it's important to know that you're not alone through yes. some of the recordings that I've pre-recorded through um, my YouTube channel and Anna Connects You. I do quietly and softly, you know, just try to get um, the calm uh, avenues of the beginning process of this red pilling and just being able to understand mm, that we are all in this together. And I'm getting goosebumps again. So More go confirmation. To, yes, confirmation. Go listen to Anna's channel. Anna connects you. Just really, we are all here to kind of hold each other's hands and walk each other home. So most definitely. And there's more. There's more stuff that is coming out right now in these moments. Um, there's more information. There's more confirmation. It's okay um, if people don't agree and like what yes. it is that you're saying. It's okay. Yes. Um, you know, I, I have been having this narrative and this conversation recently with some of my Q uh, followers and Q uh, individuals that, you know, they get really irritated because it's like, come on, it's a fact. Um, right. This is what's going on. I've done all this research. You can't tell me. I don't know what I'm talking about. And you know what? I get it. It goes yes. right away. It goes back to that same understanding that we need to have within our spirit spiritual networks, um, that as we talk uh, to our soldiers whose hearts have had to be hardened in order to fight this battle underground, um, some very demonic, horrific things. Yes. And um, if you read into some of these articles, you'll hear that a lot of these soldiers, hardened, hardened, yes. Are just crying. Have have defecated themselves because yeah. of the things that they have seen oh, so and horrible. witnessed. It is yes. horrible. Um, Alexander says, yes, the light is shining into the darkest corners of the old ruling elite of invisible enemy previously hidden dwelling places. That's really Agreed. true. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it's going to get better. Uh, if we're looking at all of these uh, subliminal messages, and it's important if someone hasn't looked into subliminal messaging to you know maybe check it out. You'll see mm -hmm. how much subliminal messaging has been in this matrix that we live in. It's been all over the place, um, anywhere from businesses to our children's uh, academics. Um, it's been infested in our music. It's been infested in mainstream media in our movies and Hollywood entertainment, you name it, it's been everywhere. Yes. So you can't deny that it's not real. Yes. What you to understand is how that affects the mind. And right. that's one big thing that um, is going to be the biggest shift of the ages is going to be changing the way that we think. Yes. Absolutely. Um, this is really beautiful. Charles Heald says, this is a quote from the Baron von Trump book, the happy forgetters and the Google people are in that book. Lots of interesting stuff. So we talk about time travel and something that was known then and there is no time and all things are happening concurrently and there is no time or space, you know. And so how do we live in this moment? and know that we have kind of multiple timelines all happening at once. And we're here to clear the darkness and clear the shadow. And we're here to clear the darkness from ourselves. And we're here to love those who are clearing the shadow. And we're here to love ourselves into a new earth, into new ways of being and doing as humanity. We want a better planet. And I think um, yes. that becomes a unison in saving these children is what brings all of humanity together. That's what the Q uh, posts were all about. The where we go one, we go all is about not about color. It's not about race. It's not about gender. It's not about skin color. It's not about the religion. None of that matters. Your status doesn't matter. The children right. are what matter the most. And we have to remember that and we can't forget yes. that. And so the dissonance and, and the, you know, the fighting and the disagreeing, none of that's going to matter when the truth really does reveal itself in its own time. I'd like to just throw in here. Yes, absolutely. And um, thinking of the children, loving the children, a lot of the, some of really great, um, futuristic ideals. I, I've been involved in something called the scrolls in Peru that were downloaded 1969 mm. to 1978. They're amazing. But they say the children are those who will stand. And I've had other 
like world leaders say to me, the children are the ones. And really, the children are the ones who come in to carry the future. And what I always have to ask myself in these situations is, what in me is being mirrored in this hologram around me? What ancient darkness, what ancient data inside of me that isn't in that iceberg where I have the tip of the iceberg in love, but what old fear and darkness inside of me. And so, you know, the sadness that we have suppressed our own inner child, that we have been willing to conform to what society asks us to do. I mean, I find myself even now um, still letting go of layers where I would conform to something just to be agreeable or to get along in the society, but knowing I have to let go of that and I have to be what's really in my heart. And I think that heart recovery is part of, in ourselves, is part of how we're helping recover the children also. And that there's literally maybe hundreds of thousands of children, of women, of people that have been taken and tortured and put in these chambers underground. Um, do we want to get into what's li- what's been going on here literally in the Well, shadow? we do need to talk about the war. And that was yes. one of the, I think one of the comments that came up is, yeah, this is a war. This is a spiritual war. Absolutely. When President Trump is talking about how there is an invisible enemy, you can't deny that something very demonic is going on. Now, I yes. talk about this in a lot of the other uh, videos that I do, especially mm-hmm. when I do live feeds. Uh, but I always make sure to talk to my audience about the pendulum and how it swings. And I'm going to say it until people are blue in the face, until I'm blue in the face, that the pendulum swings both far left and it gets very dark. And this is where people are like, I just can't believe this. This is so dark. There's no way this can be real. It goes very dark and it gets extremely demonic to the point where we're talking about the Draco reptilians. And yes, that's going to end up being a conversation at some point because it's satanic and because that's where this is what they were doing. They were worshiping. They were having, you know, all of this sense of, of darkness about them. But the pendulum also swings far right. And that's what you were talking about. You were covering the importance or just kind of mentioning about the secret space program, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Another awesome thing for my Q post people to look into in the near future. Um, because there is information on that. We have to remember yes. that the FBI and CIA had stated that we were not going to be capable of taking in this information. This is why we weren't told the truth a long yes. time ago. Mm-hmm. A long time ago. It's been going on a long Area 51. Time. Yes. Yeah. And even in some people have different time frames on that. Some people think conspiracy theory started uh, at around Area 51 back in the 1940s, 1947. And then we have other individuals that think that the conspiracy theory word presented itself around JFK's assassination. So, you know, JFK Jr., whatever. So it, everybody's got a different theory out there in regards to that. And right. I think the most important thing is not the time frame, but it's the word and the usage and that it's not changing we're changing the narrative conspiracy theorists are no longer in the near future going to be they're going to be truth seekers they're going to be individuals yes. that were trying to actually awaken us and each soldier is very different every soldier is unique in this moment in time and it's important to remind people of how special they are in their gifts and what they have to bring in their talents at this time everyone's so gifted so gifted The soldier that is killing off these horrific individuals to save the lives of children, um, the nurse who is, you know, putting together the doctors that are putting together these children that are, first of all, let's be honest here, they will not be, many of them will not be children for these individuals who were, um, you know, haven't seen the light of day. Right. To us, what we would define as a child, um, right. 
has ha, is able to smile, is able mm-hmm. to laugh, is able, right. um, you know, to cry when they don't get their way. We have that mentality and know right. how how to discipline or how to realign or reconnect a child. We do not have the resources or understanding or even the mentality to um, help these children. To help these children, that. I believe that there are there are programs that are uh, coming into place. But yes. I think the I think the people really have to get ready because some of the things that I was listening in on on uh, different chats online. We're talking about, well, should we get them toys? Um, no, they're unfortunately, right. that's beyond that, that. They're, yeah, they're at a different place. They are going to yes. need love. They're going to yes. need nurturing. They're going to mm-hmm. need patience. And this is where our spiritual loving uh, sisters and brothers come in from all over the planet. Um, this is where our star seeds come in and shine. This is not Absolutely. the time. This is not the time to to stay within your own space and not be a soldier as well. Right. And the love of compassion that's needed. Yeah. Um, Anna, I, I know that, um, you know, you're really committed. There's certain things that you don't talk about However, yes. just to mention this lockdown and how it has everybody going internal. And I think the questions we need to be asking ourselves is, who am I really? What do I really want to be doing? Do I want to be running along like a little gerbil on a wheel every day, you know, going to some job that I don't like that much, driving back and forth, shopping for things that I don't really need? Um, or do I want to become a soldier, as you call them. I think we have the soldiers that are the military soldiers. And then we have our digital soldiers. I call us the warriors, you know. Um, I think we're Pioneers is what the spiritual network will use words like. I I love the pioneers. Yeah, The pioneers. And we are here to change the world. And we're not alone. Um, Even though it can be lonely, we are not alone. And there's so many of us, but everyone's at a different level. And we have to honor and respect where each person is at, what they're able to absorb at this time. But then I think these really deep questions are getting asked right now of those, for those within, for those who are awake of who am I really? What do I really want to be doing with my life? How can I commit myself more to a healthy planet, to healthy people? to beauty, to creativity, to art, to helping cultivate a new earth that's based on the truth of our beings rather than just this chronic suffering. I think the other important thing that I would say um, is the biggest thing for me that I'm seeing is going to be a forgiveness of self Yes. in the future. A lot of people Absolutely. are going to have to under, they're going to get mad. You have to understand that mm-hmm. this whole mentality within the Q movement, uh, there is a pain that is coming and that, you know, in the, in other, in other words, um, is karma that's coming back. And yes. it's something that has been, you know, they've been avoiding for a very long time. They have not wanted to live out their karmic you know, right. Haven't you noticed? I mean, I notice karma is kind of instant these days. I mean, I can't get away with anything. If I do something, (laughs) boom, something happens and it's right in my face. Um, I could tell a bunch of stories about that. But, you know, um, we're kind of in an instant karma time, you know, something if if we're energetically out of sync with the universal flow, we're going to get a message that tells us that right away. And and so we can correct our path. We can, and again, forgive ourselves, love ourselves, and stand in the presence of our hearts. And love others. We always have to remember yes. to be extremely patient with others. Yes. We are working on that as a collective, as yes. a collective consciousness right now, but mm-hmm. we are really working at it as a collective. And yes. um, the forgiveness of self, what I mean by that is we have to forgive ourselves for ever having supported and participated um, supporting these companies and idolizing, um, you know, people in power, uh, celebrities, musicians, we idolize them. How many of us just, you know, rant and rave that they were the greatest, but did we know what they were doing? And behind the scenes, think that would we still think that? That's right. I mean, we, that's what um, the documentary that you were talking about earlier, um, uncovering the shadow, 
what, what's it called? Out of Shadows. Out of, out of Shadows. Um, and it talks about how Disney is connected with the corporations and all these movies coming forth are and driven the CIA's by- role. And the CIA's role, they're driven by a narrative to keep us kind of in this enslavement program and believing that death is good, that killing is good, that consuming blood is good. I mean, really horrible things in the undercurrent of the culture. I think with I think for different people, and and I really want to make sure that we cover this before we leave here today. Okay. Um, when it comes to doing your research about some of this stuff, I don't think every person needs to see um, the terror and the pain and the. I think agony. that's really important. I I think that if you can process through and just understand that this happened, I think that that would be enough, uh, just enough alone. To I think that's be a really able good to point. move forward. Don't feel like some like even even on on our end. Um, mm-hmm. As I as I notice that even I partake in in showing some of the truth behind information that has so called been already debunked. Um, doesn't mean that it's not a reality of individuals who have lived this life in and out, breathed uh, satanic uh, life. And everything they've that chosen they that as their path. And basically, this is really making me think of Judy, who's not here with us today, because she actually went into some severe nausea, felt like she was really processing the energy of some of the things that we're talking about. So she's here with us in spirit, but not physically in our talk. And I know that what she kind of what she always relates to this um, is that we we each are going to get this flow on our own level and we don't all have to get it on every level. And she has a really a kindness and an understanding about that. Um, let me just read a couple. So we, we just want to thank Judy for kind of having been in this circle with us and having really brought this show together. And we, I did a neat show with her last week and, um, but also to thank her for helping process these energies and these energies are, Um, They're challenging. I think another thing we talked about the other day is in looking at the shadow, like it's easy to not want to look at the shadow. And one of the things I teach is I don't want to spend all my time focusing on the shadow. I don't, I can acknowledge the shadow is there, but I don't want to just immerse myself in it over and over and over. What I want to do is feel it and then breathe, smile, cancel, release, and let go any of my negative data relate, related to it because we don't want to be in hatred or anger or rage for too long. You know, we want to allow those things to move through us and to come up to be as Jesus, who I call the star man on this beautiful Easter day, um, said, these things shall you do in greater. You know, like we are here to embody love. We are here to embody the resurrection. We are here to embody raising from the living dead those who are asleep or who are hurting in the system. And another thing that Judy would say, and we've had this conversation many times, is that even those who we call team dark, who are on the dark side of things and are acting out these dark roles, eventually they will come to their own awakening. And they are the ones who will have to review their own lives. And they will have to decide if they want to continue doing that in some other realm of darkness or if they're, they're willing to move on. Eventually we will all come to love. And there is a dark side of the journey sometimes to get there. And we, and if we didn't have contrast, we wouldn't know the light. If we didn't have the shadow, we might not know the beauty and the joy and the light of true higher being. It is stated in the Bible there. And I, and I can't exactly quote it verbatim, but there is a little bit in the Bible about shedding a light on the darkness, just not partaking in it. Yes. And so that's what our soldiers are doing. That's what the Q movement does is they are shedding light on all of this darkness and how we internalize it is definitely part of our own journey. Um, And it is part of the awakening, but we don't want to leave anyone behind. We want to do as much work as we can to be as patient as we can 
and then letting go if needed to allow people to process the 10% information that we're giving to them and remind yes. them uh, through our comments and the greetings that we do face to face that they are loved and appreciated as a human being. Yes, absolutely. Let's read a couple of the comments that people are putting here. Um, Rob Partain again says, we as people who are awake have been awakened for the purpose of holding the hands of those who will be awakened soon. We have a responsibility to be there for our fellow man. Oh, this is, um, it says, oh, yes, that's from Ron. And then Ziana Love says, Judy brought me here. Hi, Ziana. Good to see you. And Noah, Noe says, science and quantum physics, Dr. Garnier Malay talks about our quantic doubles coming to all of us for the end of times event in the 25,000 year end cycle, which we're in coming to in the next few years. And I love that. I always feel like we have an avatar up there who's kind of running the show and maybe the avatar has forgotten, you know, how in the game they are here. And so we're awakening from the game. We're awakening to remember who we are. And instead of playing all these different roles, finding out who we are as joyful beings of light. And Alexander... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say it is important to to also keep in mind, even if you are uh, listening, you don't fully agree that that's okay too. Um, you can take yes. the information that does make sense to you, that does resonate with you, and then just leave it at that. That's, that's why right. we do this is because these are two different worlds. These are two yes. different uh, worlds. We have soldiers and we have boots on the ground coming together and uniting with the spiritual um, you know, communities. And so it's important to be able to see things through different lenses and be able to respect if other people... Um, you know, are extremely, you know, kind of gone with the wind and, you know, a certain mentality. It's also okay to respect the individuals that are still like boots on the ground, um, you know, fighting these fights on an everyday basis. And I just love the level of community and oneness that we're really trying to work towards together. Yes. And I always say, you know, if everyone was like you and me, maybe the world would get a little out of balance, you know, but- it would. It, it, yeah. It so it takes all of us. It takes those of us who are kind of out on the front lines, absorbing and contemplating the change that's going on. And it takes those stable people who are carrying forward the everyday balance as we've known it all along so that this change can happen without upsetting the apple cart too much. This is our time. This is our time. And we yes. ha are going through a major shift. And in the future, we can definitely start talking about a lot of the future events that I will even be sharing. Like I said before, in the beginning of all this, I really jump between two worlds. I jump between understanding the spiritual uh, world and, and some of my background. And then, you know, more boots on the ground. And that's okay. It's okay to, as long as there's connection, <laughs> which is what I love to do, is making sure that people um, know that with the information uh, that they have, there, there's lots of it out there. Uh, there is disinformation, yes, but that's yes. also for other people to kind of go through that process and, and, and sift through it, just like we had to. We Absolutely. all had to go through it. You have to choose community. what you agree with or what you believe in and what you agree with or believe in might change over time as well. You might it is important. And... It is important also just to make sure that any information that you're getting that is very fear based mentality, if it doesn't feel right within your being, then it probably is not the information. If it's making you sick yes. and it's making you like really, really not feeling good, like the new world order mindset, um, that is just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But, you know, just process through it, whatever your framework is, just process through it. Yes, I agree. Great stuff, Anna. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what Anna Connects You is all about? Anna Connects You is um, a podcast that I am recently starting. Uh, I've had a few technical difficulties, and uh, I've had <laughs> I've had some of my electronic uh, stuff not working, and so I couldn't take it back to certain stores because they're not open right now. Um, but I am working with what I do have, and I've got a lot of different content I'll be uh, bringing up. Um, but a little bit about my background. Um, 
my big story as to why I'm so supportive of the children and saving the children I love this, yes. um, is in regards to, I was born in Guatemala. I was born in a third world country. My mother was uh, pregnant with me and was begging on the streets of Guatemala back in the 1980s. And uh, the president of Guatemala, his wife saw my mother and took her to a clinic so I could be born. And it was through this clinic that uh, my mom had me. She came down with meningitis, and then I ended up being put up for adoption. When I went to the adoption center, I had several scars and markings on my body after I was adopted. And um, when I was older, I would ask my mom where these scars came from. And she would tell me that, you know, the people in Guatemala, they didn't know how to take care of children. They weren't educated. This was what I was told as a child. And um, I started playing the violin at the age of three. I started learning about uh, sound healing. And there were times where I would be sick, but I would play my violin and I would be able to heal myself from ailments. And I just, I never got sick as a child. I never was sick. And, um, you know, now today, um, I have a master's degree in education. Uh, I got a, a, a master's from Mount Mary University in Waldorf. Well, I had started off in Waldorf curriculum. So, you know, there'll be definitely some future uh, conversations that we will have in regards to Waldorf curriculum, considering it is extremely esoteric. And, um, you know, that's a whole nother conversation. But I, I've been a teacher as well. So, you know, with my background, uh, mostly in education and uh, having, like I said, jumped between two worlds of both the spiritual, the red pilling process has happened since 2008 and has been in and out. Um, it can be extremely lonely at times and I've been there. And so I understand when people reach out to me and they feel lonely that Anna Connects You is about connecting them to more people that think the way that they think and um, will love them irregardless of how they think. That is a very cool. I love your story. I think it's just beautiful. And um, I think, you know, we each have a story and um, we each have our traumas that we've lived through in our lives and they hone us into what we are. And um, I actually live in a small Mayan village. And so I really see poverty around me every day. And it's, I wanted to live from out from behind the white picket fence. So I could know kind of what some real needs in the world were. And, um, and even in really deep poverty, people are still happy. They're still beautiful. They still love their families. And, um, but, you know, we live in a world that needs a lot of healing and a lot of repair, a lot of, I mean, I believe it is now in the lap of the people who are educated to begin figuring out how they can be part of, participate in, and help develop programs that will right. help educate those who have been uneducated, who have been left in the dust of the, you know, the movement of the big corporate infrastructure and um, time for that kind of change to happen. I want to just thank everybody who's here today. Um, these are really brand new shows and um, we will have them at this time every Sunday. The reason for doing it early in the day is because um, I have a good, um, I have, good, I have a good bandwidth of internet at this time of day. By evening, everybody's watching movies and it kind of drains down a little bit. And Anna, I'm so happy to have you here with me. Hopefully we can have more conversations in the future. But I'm really excited about what you're doing with your podcasts. And I feel like every one of these voices is so important to the change that we're in. We, we are like sprinkling fairy dust saying, hey, pay attention. And, um, and yeah. many people are awakening. I, I'll tell this, um, I was telling this when we talked the other day, like 30 years ago, if you had said to me, I would know what I know today, I would have been like, oh my gosh, that's not possible. 30 years ago, I thought, well, if everybody just has organic gardens and grows their food, the life will, the world will be a beautiful place. But um, I've learned so much over the years, the debt, you know, you just keep going to these deeper depths of what has been created here in this dimension and how we need to unravel it. This is the unraveling of the shift of the ages. Correct. And I want to invite everybody to be 21st century superhumans to remember to breathe, smile, 
love and laugh because by so doing, we create endorphins in ourselves, we shift our neurobiology, and we literally change ourselves to change the world. We have any other questions anybody would like to ask or comments? I don't know if I managed to get all of them. And Anna, I'd love to hear from you what your message is that you'd like to remind everybody. We've been getting them and they're beautiful, but a few last words. Um, Alexander says, I don't know if we read this one. We are now neutralizing, balancing, and harmonizing all those past and future timelines. And yes, I think, I think I've read most of these. Alexander also said, this has been a war between cosmic reality programmers, shamanic creators, Team Light is finally now winning via the plan using all the tactics, all the, all the TD tactics against them. Oh, there's more down there, okay. Oh, yes, there's more. Um, Ron says, we must also recognize not everyone will open their eyes with the same speed we have, right, Ron? Very true. Keep it simple. Keep it yes. simple. Nice. We need to be gentle and loving as we explain and help those who are undoubtedly going to be troubled. Yes. And James, hi, James. Good to see you today. Two great women that understand the love from a higher consciousness. The woman mother energy is so necessary. <laughs> Thank you. I get all choked up to bring forth balance in this age the world is moving into. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry to cry. <laughs> uh, very touching. And Conrad says, Happy Easter. Your approach to and level of understanding is much appreciated and needed. Thank you both very much. Yay. Anna, give us your last words of wisdom. You're such a bright light. Oh, well, I think it's well said. I just love that the two worlds are connecting and coming together. And I will continue to do more of that. And um, through this collaboration effort, um, as long as I think we keep some of the message a little simple, yes. I think that's, a, like that. that's the light red pilling mm -hmm. that we can do to change the consciousness. Because here's the thing, our soldiers are eventually going to become light workers. Yes. But they're not. And they really yet. are. They really are. Like they workers. are in different ways. In and different ways. in their own time, they're going to start doing research on a lot of this information. And there's not a lot um, of this information. It's just a lot of knowing. Now, there is science behind a lot of the stuff that we have. So I will be sharing the science of um, remote viewing and a lot of this other nice. stuff and how it's measured. Nice. I've got some great remote viewing stories too. Sometime we can do something like that together. Um, yeah, it's really, uh, it, it's an amazing time that we're in. It's challenging. It's exciting to really hold our hands out and be willing to gently help people change. I agree. I think it's really super important. Agreed. It's beautiful. We've each got our, we've each got our path. And the other thing is we can't do it alone. We, we each have a piece of the puzzle. And so you and me being here together is so much more enriching than just me being here by myself. I love it. So thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, and, thank you so um, much for having me. We want to thank JC, who's in the background, helping us run all of this because we really are grateful for having some technical help. We want to thank my husband, Marek, who's helping monitor the comments. We want to invite you to invite your friends. Let them know we'll be doing this at 2 p.m. Central Time every Sunday. I'll have various guests and hopefully have Anna again. Um, this is YouTube Live, so it will also be recorded. It will be on my YouTube channel. You can just look up 21st Century Superhuman. I'm waiting to get my name moved back over there since I switched it to a brand channel. But that is happening. And remember to click below and hit subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And if you want to click on the little bell, you'll be notified every time a video comes out. And Anna, relate again where people can find you. Uh, they can find me on my YouTube channel at Anna Connects You. Uh, in the next week or two, I will be having a lot more videos up. I'm just trying to get them perfect uploaded. We're getting this rocking and rolling going on. I just felt the need. I felt this pressure inside of me. You've got to start doing lives. And in a way, I almost didn't feel like I could do my old show recordings anymore. So um, we're feeling this energy of the collective is really moving. So help build the community, share this with your friends, share both of us with your friends, help build the collective awareness and awakening that's going on. Thank you. And 
Yep. And you can find more of my stuff at 21stCenturySuperhuman.com. Um, it that my website is just about to rise from the ashes, as well as I got the book one of 21st Century Superhuman up yesterday on Amazon. Again, I needed the physical book in the third edition up in order to put out the audio and the ebook. And so those should be coming this week. So we're rocking and rolling. We're moving along and we're in the most exciting times ever in human history, I believe. Yes, we are. Okay. Much love to all. Breathe, smile, and love and see you soon. And JC, we hand it off to you. are inside Yeah, I am the 21st century superhuman Now, now, now is the time Come, come Come on, everyone Let's celebrate We are the children of the sun I can see you when I look into your eyes We are the same and we are light Yeah, we are one Here now, hear my ancient prayer and sing along We are awakening as one And we can make a difference Yeah, we can be the change it takes to make the